All right, it is the top of the hour and we have everyone signed in. And if more people join us, we are recording our webinar presentation today. So if you have any issues or um, questions as we go, type your questions in the questions box. If you need technical assistance, send a chat to the chat box. And our new administrative assistant, Morgan, will be answering your questions and handling technical assistance. Again, our presentation is recorded and will be posted um, later today. We have also posted the PowerPoint as a document in the webinar, so please uh, download that and follow along as we go. Just a reminder, you can subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, this is sent on the first and third Tuesday of each month this year. This has timely, relevant, and useful information, and we hope that you will subscribe. If you'd like to pass that subscription form on to others in your school or district, we encourage folks to access information that's relevant to their work. And now I'll turn things over to Aika to talk about grad rate. Hi everyone, this is Aika. So for your cohort graduation rate preview application is open. It's actually open all year long. You can view current and future cohort members as well as um, submit supporting documentation for transfers. So if you haven't checked that for a long time, I would recommend going and check it. In the application, you can select the graduation year from the drop-down menu highlighted in, in the screen to select future cohorts. And you can submit supporting documentation for the transfer of students. Exit codes are listed in, in the screen. If you have any questions regarding those kids that transfer in state, you should contact the uh, IC coordinator. And if you don't have summer IC file, you should resubmit the school year 18-19 June file to update the exit code for those kids who graduated during the summer to uh, update the graduation status for those kids. The appeal will not overwrite the data in the database, so any kids who do not have graduate code, even though the child has graduated, will be listed listed as non-graduate in the database, so you want to make sure that you upload the corrected June file. Good morning, everyone. This is Kevin W. Um, wanted to let everyone know that the new accountability results have been posted on the Idaho report card. You can find that at idahoschools.org. Um, and we encourage you to go through the results for uh, your district and school. Um, there's a lot of information on there, so uh, click through and, and check it all out. And in addition to the updated data, we also have some new features in there, uh, such as a school list, which would let you look at all of the schools associated with a particular district at once. Um, in addition, we've posted some new data and resources on a redesigned uh, accountability page on our SDEU website. Um, so you'll see the screenshot right there of the new subsections that we have. You can see uh, assessment results, see our business rules for accountability, explore the school identifications and recognitions, um, read quick explainers on our accountability indicators, and access some tools to help you make use of the data. So uh, this is a nice place to stop to see some more information and kind of take the next step with your accountability data. Uh, any questions on that? Any questions in the questions box? Hey, we'll move on. I am filling in for Karen Striegel today. So uh, this is Carlin Lairway. I'm not Dr. Striegel, but I am here to remind everyone of our alternate assessment test windows. Uh, the science portfolio window will open Monday, January 6th and close Monday, April 4th at 5 p.m. The learner characteristics inventory. This is required for any student who will participate in the alternate assessment. Uh, for ISAT, English Language Arts, and Math. That will open and be available in TIDE um, and in the test delivery system on Monday, February 3rd. This is required annually. This is the only way students who participate in the alternate assessment are associated to the correct test. And then, of course, our alternate assessment, English Language Arts, and Math window opens along with our other ISAT assessments on Monday, March 16th. Just a quick recap of changes to the science portfolio. There are no changes this year. This is administered in 
for to students in grades 5, 7, and 10. This is the old science extended content standards in those grades, and this is posted on the content standards page under science. There is also a resource uh, for the Idaho Alternate Assessment Science Portfolio or IPASS system on the Idaho Training Clearinghouse site, as well as um, on our alternate assessment or special education assessment page on the website. There is the 2019-2020 IPASS manual, as well as science portfolio tutorial videos, which are fantastic and amazing. So really everything is the same uh, as last year, just updated and refreshed. Alternate assessment in English language arts and math, um, and we appreciate uh, Dr. Striegel's very fun, uh, energetic characters this morning. Again, alternate assessment, English language arts and math, grades three through eight, um, and that should say LM10, yes, 10, that is the grade level for our accountability in high school, grades three through eight and 10. Spring 2019, we administered an embedded field test in the old alternate assessment. This year, we will run an operational field test with those new items. This is a refresh of our assessment. It is a computer adaptive test. We do not have um, speech to text. Instead, the items are, um, read with human voice recordings. Um, and there has also been an update to the early stopping rule procedures. So please follow those directions very carefully. That has been posted. And of course, as a reminder, you must complete the LCI for any student participating in the alternate assessments in English language arts and math. We have been fortunate enough to receive permission from South Carolina to provide practice tests in the new format. So we partnered with several states in the country to develop and enhance our alternate assessment. And South Carolina is a couple years ahead of Idaho. And we uh, were fortunate enough, again, to borrow their practice tests as a resource for our teachers and our students. So this is, a new, this is the new format of our alternate assessment. We encourage folks to use this get familiar with it. There are grade and content specific English language arts and math alternate assessments. They're available in the IC or the ISAT portal rather um, on the alternate assessment English language arts and math page under the South Carolina alt practice test cards that you see here on the screen. Just click the card and there is a quick link, a uh, quick guide link in the webinar presentation when you download that. Some really good news we want to celebrate. This is the first year uh, that Idaho has fallen under the 1% alternate assessment participation rate, which is tremendous news. Uh, this is an ongoing effort. Uh, as you can see, um, in 2016-17, we were well over the 1% cap. This is the new requirement under ESSA that we assess no more than 1% of our students on the alternate assessment. So we want to celebrate the hard work. We have met that 1% cap. We will provide reports to LEA soon uh, to our district that if your local district is exceeding the 1% cap, which is still possible, um, there will be continued oversight and support. But we want to make sure that folks know that there is um, really just a check-in to make sure that we have met eligibility criteria for alternate assessment participation that we're following those four requirements, the new updated alternate assessment participation requirements in order to exceed that cap. And if that's the case, uh, then we'll just continue to monitor and support your districts as we do. Um, but if for some reason eligibility criteria is not being met, we will provide support and training to IEP teams to make sure they're following that guidance. And that is effective as of July 1, 2019, that new participation criteria. So there are updates to the decision at annual IEP team meetings, and the uh, participation criteria resources are available again on the Idaho Training Clearinghouse. There's been a webinar that was hosted back in June, and there is an alternate assessment participation worksheet that you can use to help you in that decision matrix. Of course, Dr. Striegel is always available if you have questions, so please reach out to her on any specifics. And I'll pause here in case we have any questions in the questions box. Uh -huh. All right, we'll keep moving. Now it's time for Andrew and an English language proficiency update. 
Good morning, everyone. This is Andrew Bennett here to give you some updates and reminders to start the year. So first off, Central Office Services has replaced the test site manager as the test content delivery system. This configuration update is necessary for uninterrupted administration of both the WIDA screener online and the 2020 access assessment. Please contact your district technology coordinators to verify that your technology infrastructure has been updated and as soon as possible to make sure your district is ready to administer the WIDA suite of assessments for this year. Technology coordinators can link to the resource, uh, resources about the update by visiting WIDA's assessment management system or WIDA's secure portal. I uh, wanted to give everyone a quick update on some important changes to Idaho's consolidated plan that impact our English learners. Following the 2020 Access Administration, a student will be considered proficient when they receive a composite overall proficiency score equal to or greater than 4.2, with a minimum score of 3.5 in domains of reading, writing, and listening, and a minimum score of 1.0 in speaking domains. Also, English learners with a significant cognitive impairment, as documented by an individualized education program, and who meet all four alternate Alternate participation criteria will exit when a P2 composite proficiency level has been met on the ALT access. Um, also, one of the changes made uh, is that IDO has re revised the measure of expected progress of an English learner following the 2020 test administration. The new measure of expected progress, as captured in the table, considers the student's initial ELP level and sets up clear growth expectations based on the six proficiency levels outlined by the WIDA consortium. Uh, moving on to screener recertification and KWAP training. All test administrators must recertify to administer and score the WIDA screener this year. Training modules and quizzes can be found within the WIDA secure portal. TAs only need to recertify for the grade level bands that they will be proctoring. <clears throat> to become more, um, sorry, to become recertified to administer the kindergarten WAPT, TAs must view the kindergarten WAPT webinar, review the test administrator manual, and score student writing samples prior to administering the test. So please note that there is no certification quiz for the kindergarten WAPT but a review of these materials is necessary. New test administrators, school test coordinators, and district test coordinators must be certified to give the access test if they will be, if this year will be the first year giving the test. It, it is always advised to revisit the training manuals and training courses found in the WIDA secure portal prior to proctoring the access test, regardless of how many times you have proctored the test. So if a school team has made a determination to screen using the paper version of the WIDA screener and your district has fewer than 25 L, a request form can be found on the English Language Proficiency Assessment webpage under Files. After the form is completed, the materials will be sent out and should be received within a few business days. After the test administration, it is the responsibility of the school to send back any and all materials to the Assessment and Accountability Department. If you have any questions, please reach out about how to get those materials. And important dates for the access. Uh, we have identified the access administration dates for the 2020 English Language Proficiency Assessment. The primary test administration window will start on January 27th and will end on February 28th, 2020. For districts who need to administer a makeup session, March 2nd through March 6th will be reserved as the makeup window. During this test window, all current English learners will, with an L status of L1, LE, or EW, must complete all four sections of the test. As always, we look forward to another successful test session. And new this year, um, and a great opportunity, is that all Idaho educators will have access to six self-paced professional learning e-workshops. These e-workshops will further strengthen the capacity of educators to support ELLs within our districts and schools. To access the e-workshops, educators will need to be set up with a WIDA Secure Portal account. So district test coordinators can create accounts for individual users or add multiple users by using a batch upload into the WIDA Secure Portal. 
Educators can also request accounts by, um, by having WIDA client services create those accounts for them. Once accounts have been initiated, educators will receive an email inviting them to complete the setup and will then have access to the e-workshop. I encourage everyone to check them out. And last, in addition to the WIDA e-workshops, test administrators, school test coordinators, technology coordinators, and district test coordinators are encouraged to participate in the webinar supplied by WIDA and the Idaho Alpha team. The next webinar is scheduled for September 26th and will provide new test coordinators with how-to information on creating WIDA, WIDA user accounts, monitoring test administration, and using WIDA AMS as district test coordinator. A complete list of, along with all other links to join the webinars can be found on the Alpha page under training tab. Please contact me anytime if you have any questions or need any assistance. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, we have a couple. Um, so first, um, someone said they're doing some cleaning about the packet for the paper Rita screener data 2017. Um, is there something we should do with these documents? Please send that to the State Department of Education, um, 650 West State Street, uh, Boise, Idaho, 83720. Attention, Andrew Bennett. Okay, and another question we have um, is for access testing, what is the due date for the uploading students for material ordering purposes? So the due date for material ordering is... For the upload. For the upload, I believe it's October 21st. The upload deadline is typically in November, just before the Thanksgiving break. Um, the department is currently investigating and working with DRC to determine if districts will be uploading their data or if the department will be doing that, and we will have future guidance in our October webinar. Now we'll turn things over to Elena for a quick IRI update. Great. Good morning. Um, my name is Elena Knopp. So we're going to jump right in. Our fall testing window is open. It will close on September 27th, so we have just a couple more weeks to get all of our K-3 students um, assessed. Important to know, just the same as last year, that SCE will pull the first assessment for each student. So if a student logs in, takes their IRI in August, logs in again in September, um, and is tested again, the pull that will happen from our side is the August test, the very first time a student logs in and takes that test. Also important to know as the testing window um, is open that you must report test improprieties in the incidence log if you would like us to take a second score. So if you have a student, for example, that took their IRI under the wrong login, um, became ill during testing, there was a fire drill, there was a technology issue, you're going to want to go into the test impropriety log log that incident so that we know when we pull the data that we're going to want to pull an on-demand assessment for a particular student because of the testing impropriety. For 2019-2020, we are offering several different training opportunities. The first being an implementation mini-series for teachers. We recognize that teachers often can't get out of the classroom, can't get substitutes, so we want to bring the training to them. We encourage all teachers, K-3, to sign up for our implementation mini-series. We're going to be posting new videos monthly. Um, teachers can sign up for graduate credit through NNU. Our regional trainings are really this year more focused for administrators. We want principals, coaches, um, curriculum contacts, special education directors to come to the regional trainings we're going to really dive into the data and how administrators and coaches can support teachers. These are half-day sessions. We're offering them around the state in regions one, two, three, four, and 5. Um, these are live links, so when you download this presentation, please click on those links for the date. Registration will close 10 days prior, and our first training is coming up on October 1st. So please look at that and get registered. Some new things you're going to want to be aware of in IRI. The reporting view is now changeable. When you log in with a manager level account, 
you have the option of viewing your report through the intervention tiers. This is what we used last year. This was all we could see last year. It's going to give you percentile rank scores, and it's going to tier your students. Tier 1 would be above your 40th percentile. Tier 2 is at or below 40. Tier 3, then, is below the 20th percentile. This year, you can toggle to levels or quintiles where it will show your student performance in five equally spaced ranges. This is going to allow you to really differentiate the kids that are in Tier 1 and provide some enrichment to them, as well as the students that are in Tier 3, we can really look at who's below the 40th versus who's below the 20th. So I would encourage you to use that toggle. Again, you can only turn that on if you have a manager level account. It will not impact reporting at the state level. We will still pull the Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 scores. This view will simply allow you to see levels of performance to better inform your instruction. Also new in IRI, the grade level equivalency will no longer be included in the report. Please ensure that staff and parents understand percentile ranks because that is what will be included on the report. Grade equivalence will no longer be provided. This was a decision made by ICE Station. If you want more information about that, reach out to me. I'm happy to share what I know. Um, also new in IRI is an oral reading fluency assessment. This assessment is being offered as a part of the iStation suite. Teachers will have access to use the oral reading fluency assessment as an instructional tool. Please know that when students log in to the app, they will not see the oral reading fluency assessment. Currently, it is housed right now only in the web-based application. For students to log in and use, the scores are then transferred into um, the teacher view. This will change in January. That's when that oral reading fluency assessment will migrate from the web-based app, from the web-based application into the apps where students log in. Please know that ORF is not a required subtest for IRI, and the scores from it will not be included in any statewide data reporting. It is simply a tool that we hope teachers can access for their instructional needs. Some answers to questions that I've been getting from the field. IRI is required for all K-3 students. If students test in both months, as we said prior, the SD will pull the first login. So the August 4th, they tested in both August and September. The oral reading fluency test is not a required subtest and it will not be included in the data reporting. Also, non-English speaking students can have their test directions changed to Spanish. This feature is embedded in the IRI within the individual student profile. I've been getting a lot of questions regarding that. Other questions? Okay, and now we're moving on to a NAEP update. Hey everybody, this is Paul Kleiner your NAEP coordinator. Students around the nation are taking the NAEP long-term trend this year. This test will start in the fall with 13-year-olds taking it, nine-year-olds will take it in the winter, and then 17-year-olds will take it in the spring. This will be a paper and pencil assessment just as it was in 1971 and will test both math and reading. Very few schools in Idaho will take this test. I've been in touch with the schools that are taking it, taking it and am excited to visit them while the test is in session. On a separate note, the 2019 NAEP results are coming soon. Log into the next webinar for more information. Questions for me, always email me, call me, let me know. Oh, nice. Um, is a policy and practice to still use the pause feature in iStation versus turning the timer off for the SCE assessment window specifically? Good question. Um, probably should have been in that frequently asked. Um, yes, best practice would be to use the pause feature. Um, we do not want to turn the timer off for students um, unless they are a student with a significant cognitive impairment. Otherwise, the pause feature is your best practice if you are looking um, to break up that testing session for a student. 
All right, <laughs> we'll move on to an update uh, from the college entrance exam team. 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 Actually, back to me. This is going to be Paul Kleinert again. Hello, everyone. The preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test is just around the corner. We recently posted lots of helpful college entrance exam information to the Idaho SCE Assessment and Accountability website. Included is the PSAT Coordinator Manual and tips for preparing for the fall PSAT and MSQT. September 19th is the last day to order, reduce, or increase your testing materials via the test ordering system. It is also the last day to use the bulk upload system so that you can receive your pre-admin materials, including the pre-ID labels, on October 2nd. If you want more information on bulk registration, there is a webinar on the College Entrance Exam website under the Training tab on the Assessment and Accountability website. Danielle, why do we go through the bulk registration process? Because no, because we want the data clean and nobody wants to bubble in if they don't have to. Thank you, Danielle. Test day this year will be October 16th. Okay, uh, and now we'll uh, move over to the uh, SAT. Uh, just a quick note that um, Danielle sent out the 2020 SAT school day intake form. Uh, that email was sent out to staff members who were listed as the SAT contacts for last year when we had that information. Uh, and district test coordinators were copied on that. Uh, that form was due September 6th. Um, so since we're past that, we're going to be following up with um, those who have not yet completed it and sent it back to us. All right. No questions right now. So we'll move on to an update on science. Uh, I am also not Kevin Chandler. Uh, he is uh, over in eastern Idaho uh, with um, Aaron McKinnon, our science content uh, coordinator, working with schools and districts over in that area on our new science assessment and science content standards. So here's the plan for 2019-2020. The ISAT science test will be administered in elementary, middle, and high school as a field test. That means this is the new assessment. There will be no scores for states, districts, or teachers, or students, or otherwise. This test is planned to be administered in grade five, grade eight, and grade 11. Please note grade five is not different than it has been, but grade eight and grade 11 are new changes. There is an asterisk next to grade eight and 11. This is pending final approval by the State Board of Education in October. They have approved this preliminary rule. We had a public comment period where we captured feedback from the field on the proposed changes for the middle school assessment to move from grade seven to grade eight, and for the high school assessment to move from an end of course assessment to a comprehensive assessment administered in grade 11. We will take that information feedback that we collected during the public comment period to the board in October, where the State Board of Education will make a final decision. It would be a temporary and proposed rule and would be in effect for the test window uh, March 15th through May 15th. And that should actually say March 16th. March 15th is a Sunday. March 16th, 2020, May 15th, 2020. There are practice tests or interim assessments, rather, for elementary, middle, and high school science tests available on the ISAP portal. We've also posted the blueprints. This is the most uh, frequently requested item related to the science assessment. What does the test blueprint look like? So the blueprints for the new assessment are available on the ISAP portal and will be posted on the SCE website um, just as soon as they're accessible later this week. We also have some upcoming science educator workshops. Uh, and this is really about the development of our assessment. And we are always looking for folks to volunteer to provide their input in the development of our assessment for Idaho students. So the upcoming meeting is October 8th, 9th, and 10th. And it's a content review item. We will look at items for elementary, middle, and high school uh, science assessments, making sure that those items align to uh, the content standard and uh, that the content is accurate, uh, that the science itself is accurate in those items presented to students. We have a sign-up form out there right now, and you have the link in front of you that any interested groups, anybody that's interested in providing uh, input on the content 
development of our science assessment that's interested and available to participate October 8th, 9th, and 10th is encouraged to sign up by September 13th. We're looking for about 25 people, so um, we may have more than we need, and if that is the case, we will definitely take those volunteers for a future meeting, which we will have ongoing throughout the year. Okay, there's a question. Um, will the alternative science be changed to grade 11 in the future? So the alternate science assessment will likely follow uh, the assessment plan for regular, uh, for the general education assessment. That being said, um, the alternate science assessment will also be moving away from a portfolio assessment to an online assessment similar to the ELA and math assessment we have now for alternate assessment. So more decisions to be made pending the decision by the board on the final outcome of the general education science assessment, um, but it would be likely to follow the same grade levels um, and be aligned to the same general education standards using um, alternate achievement standards for our students with significant cognitive disabilities. We do have some working groups uh, helping to develop that science assessment as well for alternate assessment. Um, so we're excited to, to see that work come to, to Idaho. All right, I'm going to turn things over to Elena since Kevin's out to give you an ISAT update. Great. So some things to know about the system. Tide, the online TA course, Airways Reporting, ORS are all now available on the ISAT portal. Important to know that all passwords have been cleared out of AIR. So the first time that a user logs in, they will need to reset their password um, to get into Tide. The certification course is updated for the new school year. Interim testing, grades three through eight in high school. The testing window is open. Opened on the 3rd of September and will remain open through the 15th of March. Um, again, Testing window will open May 26th through July for that summer school period. These are accessible through the SCE AIR portal. New for ELA and literacy this year for the ISAT interim testing um, are updated ICAs, the interim comprehensive assessments for grades nine and 10. Those are gonna feature appropriate cut scores. There's also 21 new focus interim assessment blocks. That's three per grade. New for math, the ICAs for grade nine and 10 now include content appropriate cut scores. 21 new FIABs again, three per grade level. There are now Hmong and Somali translation glossaries that have been added to all items in the IABs and ICAs. So we encourage you to really go in and take a look at that if you have students that would benefit. There are new accessibility resources, the illustration glossaries added to all of the items in the IAB and ICAs. Beginning with interim assessments administered in the 1920 school year, the results will only appear in Airways reporting. You can still access previous year interim and submittive assessment results in ORS. Smarter Balanced Assessment System, the digital library. Please utilize this resource. You're gonna find instructional resources. You're gonna find professional learning resources. You're going to see playlists. These items all being updated. Uh, most recently, an update went through at the end of July. So if you don't have a digital library account, if if folks that you work with don't, please encourage them to go to the digital library that is accessible through the portal and just click to create a new user account. It's that simple. Let's talk summative testing. Grades three through eight and 10 with grades nine and 11 being optional. The tentative window right now is set to open on the 15th of March. The 16th of March. That uh -huh. again is a, is a Sunday, and that, that window is final, <laughs> no longer tentative as of confirmation yesterday. So, so new final window, the 16th of March, 16th of March. 15th of May. Again, you're going to get to your summative testing through the SDE AIR portal. 
I set questions. Okay, no questions. While we wrap up, um, we'll wait for any other questions to come in. Um, our next webinar is 10 a.m. October 9th. Please register now. You can register for the rest of the remaining webinars for the entire year. Again, those are always the second Wednesday of the month at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And you can register at the link here or go to our Assessment and Accountability Resource Center and register for all of the webinars and have those on your calendar for the rest of the year. Morgan said we do have another question in, so we'll go to that now. Yeah. Um, is it mandatory that the last weeks of the ISAT window are intended for makeup only? So in the um, IDAPA rule, there is a very clear delineation that uh, we offer a, a set aside makeup window. However, we recognize that some schools uh, with limited resources and high numbers of students may need to be uh, testing into that last final two weeks, but it is not recommended that that be considered part of your general test schedule, that it be dedicated to makeups when that's possible. Um, that ensures that you meet your 95% participation rate. That ensures that you have built in adequate time for a makeup period for students that may be coming in and out uh, for absences or because of um, activities in the spring, a lot of times sports and other things uh, can change student schedules. So making sure you have adequate time built into your schedule. Um, the final two weeks of the window are considered the makeup period. And that goes back to having students enrolled on or before the first Friday in May. Those are the students required to test. So those last two weeks ensure you have adequate time to assess any student who may enroll on that final day before the cutoff. Any other questions? Okay, as always, please feel free to email us your questions as they come in. We continue to update a uh, frequently asked questions document that we'll be posting on our website. Again, this video or this webinar will be recorded and posted along with the transcript later today. And we appreciate your time and we wish you all a wonderful 2019-2020 school year. Thanks everybody. Thank <laughs> you.